Oh, science. Science has given us social media. We're going to talk about that today. Yes. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Jay. But let's not, let's not blame social media strictly on science here. It's, it's a creature of the culture, you know. Thank you. It's a creature of humanity. <laughs> right. You know, this is, you know, you look, for example, you look at an anthill and you wonder why they all go in one direction or the other and do their things together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of an automatic uh, DNA co collaboration. <laughs> Um, it's the way it is, uh, and it is the way it is with the uh, this human species, mm -hmm. too. We, we do collaborate, and we sometimes do. our collaboration goes off the track. Right. Uh, we, we, we don't always collaborate well. You know? Right, right. Uh, although it has gotten us this far, the question is what happens now? Right. And so, um, you know, talking with a friend of mine about, uh, you know, how the government is doing, how the democracy contemplated by the founders is doing, and... And so we made a little list of the branches of government to see how they were doing. The executive is turning into a, um, an authoritarian dictatorship. Uh, some people call it a, uh, a, a sole proprietorship, not a government. The, 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 you know, every, where he's running right. everything and his right. departments are inconsequential. And he's, and he's got this technique of making people do exactly what he wants um, and not, not talking back. Uh, or he punishes them. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this new investigation uh, into the, you know, the creation of the investigation, uh, the mother investigation. Mm -hmm. um, that's punishment, you know, mm -hmm. is what it is. So what you have is a kind of dictatorship emerging, uh, and that branch of government is compromised, um, changing in front of our eyes, right. as a matter right. of fact, and we can't seem to do anything about it. Uh, the, the legislature, the Congress is, is also, it's dramatically changed, mm -hmm. profoundly changed, and it is non-functional. Right. Wait till September when we get back to the money issues right. and the budget issues. Right. Yeah. It could be the biggest disaster in American history. Yeah, yeah. finding common ground seems to be lost. Earth. Oh. Yeah, and, and they, they, Congress has not done any real business right. for at least two years now. Right. Right. Um, so we're, we're in deep kimchi about, mm -hmm. about the legislative branch. Mm -hmm. It's non-functional. Right. Um, okay, then uh, we get into the judicial. Well, you know, this is been coming for a while through a couple of uh, public administrations where, um, you know, the people uh, in the constituencies that surround the president have uh, had a big effect on his appointments of judges. Right. And uh, we have had a serious, um, um, you know, a shift uh, to the appointment of conservative judges. Right. And, and Obama's judges, they couldn't even get a hearing. Right. Uh, so now we have lots of federal courts which are really turn to the right. And, you know, I mean, there's various people there. Some of them may, may, you know, find a better way, but a lot of them are stuck in this kind of Republican conservative uh, ideology, mm -hmm. which does not include preserving the Constitution, right. uh, which means, uh, you know, following the Donald Trump's um, view of the world, which is um, really not, not what the founders intended. And, right. and following his, following his, you know, view of things right. and his agenda. So right. uh, in many ways, the federal courts right. are compromised right. and it continue to be, you know, while we deal with all of his Michigas, uh, you know, over the, the daily grind, the, the, the you know, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, um, the reality show that he right. creates for us. Um, we, we don't realize that there's a huge number of judges that are being appointed and quietly confirmed by the Republican yeah. Senate without, a, yeah. without any discussion at all. Right. Yeah. Uh, they right. just rubber stamp whoever he appoints. Right. This is really problematic. Um, okay, and uh, okay, then you get, um, you get other, those are the three branches of government. Right. Um, and uh, the department heads are, have become obedient or non-existent or appointed um, on a, you know, a, a, what do you call it, an acting basis. Right. So we don't hear much from them except right. We hear how bad they are. Um, the, um, oh my goodness, uh, the press is losing ground. Right. Uh, you know, he says the failing New York Times, he right. says, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure uh, what that means, but I noticed that CNN uh, just uh, did early outs for 100 of its news staff. So some of the press may not be making enough money to continue the, the fight, so to speak, mm -hmm. against a, a failing government. Um, then we have education. Education has not been right in this country for decades, and uh, we have the product of it of people who are really not educated or do critical thinking or read the newspaper to the extent there are still newspapers. Uh, Twenty-four hundred, you know, uh, 
uh, was it journalists or newspapers have disappeared in the last couple of years. Um, so uh, is the public getting educated? Um, they should, they should mm -hmm. watch Think Tech. We can okay. help. There we go. Um, so, um, that, and, and, you know, the uh, inability of the public to actually engage on, on uh, political issues mm -hmm. and, and on, you know, national issues is, is becoming a real impediment to the national decision process. You know? And so you're blaming all these ills on social media? No, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. But I'm saying one of the other elements in this pie, which we, talk, we should talk about today, is social media. It mm -hmm. has emerged. It has replaced the, the press in many ways. Right. It has had a huge effect on the executive who uses it to right. communicate directly to the public without, you know, any real thought process. Uh, right. whatever, whatever he does in the morning, whatever hamburger right. he has for breakfast at three in the morning, um, you know, whatever, whatever right. his uh, immediate inclinations are, bingo, it's on, it's on Twitter. Uh -huh. um, and, and, and other politicians are doing that, too. He's uh -huh. not the only one. Right. Social media has a huge effect among the electorate who may not be educated or reading papers because there aren't so many right. papers. Um, they are getting their information from social media. Right. And then you have uh, foreign countries coming in and trying to affect our elections and our thought process and divide us and neutralize our, our political will. Okay, they're using social media. Right. So it's important we should understand some of why social media has this kind of influence and impact, right? That's it. Right. And I mean, there's a few reasons right off the bat. It's very timely, right? You can, something can go wrong and literally six out of seven people on the planet can know about it in moments. Um, I mean, it's that, that pervasive now uh, you know, in terms of having access to, to social media. Uh, two, it's short and catchy. Typically, social media things are a few words, a sentence, one picture, right? You don't have to spend 20 minutes reading through six pages of detailed text. You don't have to decipher complex graphs. You don't have to deeply think about it. It's some little blurb, some little instant message, some little tweet of 140 or 280 characters, right? So it's very appealing. And then there's a really the, the subtle but underlying problem is basically bad news is something we pay a lot of attention to. Uh, people. And that's built into our DNA because our ancestors who didn't pay attention to potentially bad news didn't survive. You can afford not to pay attention to good news. You could afford miss a meal, miss out on a mating opportunity, whatever. That really didn't hurt you too badly. But if you missed out on the rustling in the bush that was you know, a lion, you didn't reproduce. So we, are, we come by this ability to pay attention to, to hear, to focus in on bad news exorbitantly, uh, way out of balance. And th those things, and it's short, it's, it's pithy, easy to remember, and it's negative. That's what social media is so good at doing, right? Now, you, you could argue they should be able to do that with good news, but they'd have to do it twice as hard to make it work. Yeah. It's, a, it's a weapon. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to assassinate somebody in public, social media will help you do that. Right, right. Um, you, want to, you want to tell lies, social media will, will extend right. your opportunities right. globally to tell lies. Right. And, you know, any, any lie that's repeated often enough, some people will begin to believe it. Right. You, know, you, could, you could start saying the sun rises in the West, and if Donald Trump tweeted that a zillion times, there'd be a fair number of people who would agree the sun rises in the West. Right. You know, so regardless it, of... It confuses things. Right. It unclarifies things. Right. Um, and uh, it, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's divisive. Right. I think by its nature, it's divisive. You don't have to be a Russian, uh, a Russian misinformation person um, to, to make social media divide people. It has an inherent ability to divide people. Right. I would argue that it has that same ability can be used to bring people together. That's not a, what's happening, though. But it's, it's not being used that way. It is a technology, in that sense, relatively neutral, but is being used more to insert those wedges to help make people think opposite ways, drive them into one camp or another, rather than helping us understand our commonalities. Right. So you, you can create, create little communities that, are, that are distinguish themselves from all other communities, right. and these communities are divided, and these communities cannot, uh, well, they, they stand in the way of national will. Right. Uh, they stand in the way of positive development because they're right. always arguing with each other. Right. And then you, you throw into social media little threats. And again, this is negative stuff. And so you pay a lot of attention to it. You, you pretend, you put some message out about your community being 
under siege, under threat from some other community. And you know, that sort of fear mongering, yes, people hear it, they retweet it, they remember it, they spread it. And the next person who hears it remembers it too and spreads it. And yeah, it tends, tends to go big. And hate. Bad. Yes. Let's talk about hate. Yeah. Social media is a natural for hate. Right. I mean, it's, it is a, it's a channel that you know, it opens itself up to spread that. Right. And it's, it's too bad because it could be used to, to help, <clears throat> you know, I mean, really to help us all see our common ground. Right. You see the person in outer Mongolia is facing the same problems as we are. You know, they, they want to survive. They want a happy, healthy family. You know. They want to get along in the world. They want to, you know, to pass good things along to their kids and their kids' kids. All of us want those same things, right? And social media could be reinforcing that message, but that doesn't really suit a lot of people to, to do that. So when Zuckerberg was, a, you know, an undergraduate at Harvard and he wanted to help people get dates, really, mm -hmm. uh, he never he never envisioned that this would happen. And he's the leader, and he's picking up steam. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact. And the notion of trying to, you know, satisfy governmental concerns and, uh, you know, congressional inquiries and all that, um, that's not going to happen. I don't, think, I don't think Facebook is going to change materially. I, I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to continue. It's going to expand. It's driven, at least as far as the owners and Zuckerberg are concerned, by money mm -hmm. and power. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it must give them a certain psychic benefit to know that they have a platform that is universal, sure, no, ubiquitous, it, everywhere yeah, in the world. Just, just a, a couple of decades, you just poof, you know, move, move this whole new, introduce this whole new vehicle for communication that is now so widely used that literally, you know, six sevenths of the Earth's population, you know, has access it's to it. It's going to continue. Yeah, right. You know, one of the one of the things about it is that you and I may have a computer at home. Or a television, a cable television, where you listen to certain news. Um, but you know, a lot of people in the world, they only have phones. Right. And phones are the perfect uh, device, the perfect platform. Social media is so effective. Mm -hmm. You know, for a few bucks, you can have, you can be part of this huge global community. Right. So what you have, I think, you have, um, you know, in many places, increasing, I think, uh, you, have, you have governments that are becoming more autocratic. You have legislative systems that are failing. Um, you have, um, you have uh, education that isn't really so good. Um, you, have, um, yeah, you, have, you, have, you have social media. You have social media. that there's a, All these things create a kind of intellectual vacuum among people. Um, they, they need to be part of a, a larger, a larger mm -hmm. group. Uh, they need information. They need to be told what to do. They, they need to, you know, need to satisfy those fears mm -hmm. you know, talked about. Um, and social media, to the rescue, mm -hmm. it comes and it, it, it sort of it fills, it fills the void for them. Right. Um, and it actually reinforces the failure of government and the failure of positive institutions right. uh, that can actually work together for, um, you know, uh, effective and um, uh, constructive political will. So right. I think what's happening in the U.S. is a, is a is sort of, it runs a parallel to what's happening in many other places. Right. Oh, yeah, we see, we see very similar things happening in uh, the Philippines, uh, various parts of Europe these days. Oh, it's, Venezuela. Yeah, Venezuela. You know, it's all subject to manipulation. It's also right. subject to misinformation. Right. And there are people out there, it's not just Putin, by the way, right. there are people out there who would love to see these governmental institutions crumble, be confused right. and crumble. Sure. They would love to see chaos. Yeah. Because if somebody else is in chaos, you're better. Yeah. You're better off right. so, and you have leverage over them. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's classic zero-sum thinking, right? You know, somebody else, for me to gain, somebody has to lose, right? And that's, it's, yeah. it's unfortunate. We don't, we don't have to play that game, right? We can all realize that we can all rise together and become better, better people and better countries do better things, help one another, create good stuff by working together, by really collaborating, as we do have. We do have a f very fundamental instincts to do that. Right? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, would not, we would not have survived as a species if we did well, not, we well, not collaborate. So far, so far, so good, but maybe there are too many of us. Well, maybe we're at a, a tipping point in this species and in human history uh, mm -hmm. where we cannot support, you know, uh, 8 billion people anymore. Right. And uh, the, what we have built is, uh, is going to come apart and, and leave the world able to support only X billion less. 
So I, I, will, I will have to say in sort of opposition to your rather dark uh, trend analysis here that you're making, and you make a convincing case, uh, if you read Steven Pinker's book called Enlightenment Now, mm. he presents a massive array of data. It's a big book, a massive data set after data set after data set that says basically, no, we're doing really well. Okay. Violence is down, education is up, lifespan is up, health is doing better. All these things were really doing much better. And it's a very consistent trend around countries all around the world for decades, if not centuries. Yeah. What yeah. is he smoking? <laughs> um, let's take a short break, Ethan. We'll come back and we'll, we'll, we'll come around to these positive things that he talks about and that you talk about. And we'll see if we can sort of make a little list of all the things that are positive and all the things we need to do to achieve a, a positive result or save ourselves, if you will, there we in, go. In, the, in, in our lifetimes and in the years coming, coming soon. We'll be right back. I can hardly wait. We're going to make this a minute, but, you know, we got to come back soon. <laughs> Aloha. I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. much. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Okay, well, uh, Ethan Allen and I, we have, we have uh, joined issue, if you will, on the failure of uh, customary, you know, developing institutions in our world today, in our global village today. Um, we have tried to paint, you know, try to figure out where social media fits in all of that. And he has pointed out that going forward, there may be a, a, a better picture available to us, and social media will definitely be involved in that picture. And since this is likable science, the first thing we should do before we figure out, you know, the affirmative steps to take is we should evaluate where this science is going. And, I, you know, I'm, I, I want to ask you, Ethan, where is it going? And the first question, of course, is the platform itself. Because uh, if I tell you that of the 8 billion people, it won't be long before all 8 billion people and maybe more um, have the platform and there are, therefore are involved in social media. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what is science and technology going to do? <laughs> First thing is, well, 5G is coming. It's inevitable. It's going to come to all of those uh, devices and everybody is going to have the benefit of that. But I think there's more social media in terms of software. It will become more sophisticated. Sure. Uh, I don't think, as I said before, I don't think that Mark Zuckerberg is really going to fix the problems that ail us, um, but he will advance the, advance the technology. We'll have right. you know, more um, magnetic and highly leveraged uh, function, functionality with mm -hmm. social media. Right. So, so, yes, I'd like to know what we can do, but first, can you tell me, how this is going to become more powerful in the years to come. Well, I, I mean, I think if you simply look at the trends over the past years, you know, more people are using more social media more often for more things now. Um, and we see no reason, I see no reason why that's going to change. Uh, people aren't going to just say, oh, no, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, at least I don't, I don't believe that's going to happen. Uh, so, yes, the question then becomes, is it going to materially change direction in some sense? Is, is, is social media going to become more of a force for unification, for good, for education, well, for learning? More of a force, first of all. I mean, one of the things that came up maybe 90 days ago was when Trump said he was establishing a national social media system where he could speak to the nation about national issues, uh, maybe national emergencies, for example. Uh, where he would get on the horn, so to speak, he would get on his Twitter account or some other social media, and he would talk to us, all 320 million of us right now today, him to us. 
mano a mano. Talk to all of us. And you know, that's perfectly doable, mm -hmm. especially for a president who sees the benefit of having social media connections mm -hmm. with everyone in the country. He doesn't need no, no legislature. He doesn't need no department heads. He doesn't need no courts. He wants to talk to us. After all, he's doing a sole, a sole enterprise, a sole, uh, a sole proprietorship type government. Right. So I see that coming in the future, where a person in political power will control social media in, in some way like that, and will be able to talk to us, all of us, and give us comments, news, lies, hmm. uh, instructions. Um, gosh, I don't know what. Uh, don't you think that's coming, and how would that affect things? It might well be coming. Uh, I, I guess I'm maybe a little more of an optimist than you. I think there are probably enough people in the legislative and judicial branches who are power hungry enough themselves that they will, they will resent being squashed down and, and made into nobodies, and they will stand up and say, no, you can't do this. You know, we, we, we have a constitution that says there are three co-equal branches of government, and we insist upon having our say. That, that wouldn't be in the U.S. Senate, uh, but maybe in the House. <laughs> yeah. Right, House so far, right, <laughs> yes. And that's our, our big hope, I agree. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that is frightening. If he can co-opt, if anyone in, in authority can co-opt that much bandwidth, basically, of that many people, that often they, they can insert a very powerful message. They, they, they can tell whatever message they want and tell often enough enough people that some percentage of those people will absolutely believe it, even if it's completely ridiculous. Now, That's happening now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know, let me take my, my, uh, my tongue-in-cheek uh, suggestion even further. So, <clears throat> okay, uh, he is the master. This one leader is the master of social media in this country. But social media is, is uh, ubiquitous. <clears throat> it's in every country, and to the extent that he can leverage uh, the ability to speak to every country, then he would do that. Mm -hmm. And we could conceivably get to a point where one person, through social media and you know, degrading all forms of representative government and all that, can speak to the world mm -hmm. and tell them what to do and tell them the truth, or maybe not. Um, isn't that in the cards with social media? Isn't that in the cards the way humanity works? Isn't that the card which, you know, with the evolution of, of the species using this kind of technology? How can, we, how can we moderate that? How can we stop that? I don't see any significant steps being taken to restrain that possibility. No, I, I mean, I agree. I, I suspect if, and, and, you know, if it doesn't happen from a central authoritarian government figure, I can see it happening sort of on the, on the, in the dark side of things. You know, some, from out of the blue comes some voice that's talking to us all, and yes, yeah, so Big Brother. Yes, yeah, so we're co-opting all of our channels and telling us whatever it wants to tell us. Right, you know? and people following. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like uh, in, in China, uh, Xi Jinping has this social quotient thing, mm -hmm. where um, everything you do, uh, everywhere you go, uh, you're being watched. Uh, right. And, and, and rated, measured, right. and then you have a very, you know, complicated algorithm mm -hmm. that gives you a, a social quotient. Right. And that determines whether you can get on a train or a plane, right. whether you have advantages in your business or personal life, right. um, financing possibility, the whole thing is determined by this algorithm, right. okay? Um, and people in China, now not everybody agrees, but people in China go along with it yeah. Oh, yeah. because they feel that it helps raise the level of obedience, of mm -hmm. conduct that is constructive to support Xi Jinping mm -hmm. and, and the, uh, Xi Jinping and, and the, you know, the country in general. Right. So they have been, I don't want to say brainwashed, but they have come to the point where um, this works for them right. and they'll support it. Right. Even though in the U.S., at least theoretically, not a lot of people would go for that. Right. So, uh, you know, it's the same thing here, isn't it? There are people who support what Trump does, even though it's ridiculous what he does. It's irrational what he does. It's obviously not helping anyone, um, it's but helping, they support it anyway. Huh? It's helping a few people. A lot of them the last It's, it's helping a few of his friends, <laughs> right, yeah, you know, right. but not helping you know, the, right. the poor guys in the South, for example, who are losing oh. the social safety net, right. but continuing to support him yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a kind of hip, hypnotic trance involved in all of this. Right. And I think social media includes that. It's a weird thing. 
It's a weird part of that DNA you spoke of. You know? Yeah, and, they, and this is why I think that there really should be a conversation like this happening more on a national level. And, and what do we want social media to do? You know, do we really want it to become a, a vehicle for an authoritarian figure to, to brainwash the whole population? I don't really want that. I, you don't want it, and I actually suspect most people don't want it. Do you want it to be a, a forum for dialogue and, and to share our common uh, wishes, our, our, our better desires? Yes, I think, again, most people would say we do, you know. So let's, let's do that. Let's, let's help make it. Let's, let's essentially tell the people who are in charge of social media, Mark Zuckerberg and his pals, that no, we, we, don't, we don't really want hate speech on, on there. We don't, we don't want people urging violence. We don't want people posting videos of school shootings. You know, we, we really want you know, people you know, running campaigns to, for, for the social good, helping those in need, uh, working on humanitarian relief projects, uh, highlighting situations where the world is getting better, you know, even in adverse circumstances. This is the enlightenment you yes, talked about. Exactly, exactly. Well, you know, I wonder if there's a way to measure if we're going there or not going there. I mean, I think there's a lot of people in the world who are well-intentioned, mm -hmm. uh, who want to do the right thing, who believe in decency and fairness and treat your fellow man well and all that, right, woman? Uh, but, I, you know, but the question really is, where, where's the drift? I don't know if this is something we can, we can get metrics on, but you know, there's a possibility, and I would entertain it as a possibility, that more and more social media is a weapon against all of that. It's to hurt people. It's to spread disinformation. Uh, it's to manipulate people. Um, it's all the wrong things. And as you said before, I mean, um, th there's a certain thing in the human DNA that I is afraid uh, and that seeks bad news because bad news is, is, is threatening in some right. way. Right. And, and the human species needs to know bad news. And so right. we, we form little communities and we are so angry with the other community. Right. I mean, I see social media as an essential element in the divisiveness um, that he, Trump, is, uh, is suggesting. Right. And so if you look at some of these uh, shootings, for example, right, you mm -hmm. find that people were motivated by social media to do, to do these horrendous crimes. Absolutely. Um, that's very significant in terms of the way it works. You know? Absolutely. And that is, I think it's a, again, as a technology, it's sort of neutral, but because of human nature, it's being commonly used more in a negative sense than a positive sense. So it means there needs to be a concerted effort on all of our parts, basically, to turn it around, to use it, make it an instrument for social good. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen just because you say it or I say it. It's going to happen when millions and millions of people sort of demand that change and say, no, we don't want to hear this crap. We don't want, we don't want bullying. We don't want uh, you know, mayhem and, and violence to become our daily diet. We, we really want, to, we want social media to help us be the best we can be you know, and make the world the best place. I, I certainly agree that would be wonderful, but I feel it's a kind of race. Oh, yeah, it's I a see. race between yeah. uh, the good and the bad. It's a yeah. race between, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, autocrats uh, uh, and, uh, and the good guys and uh, yeah. query whether the good guys have a leader that will lead them in that right. direction. The jury is out. Right. But I think we're starting off with uh, uh, somewhat behind. The good guys are somewhat behind in this race already, yeah. you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm comforted, but only to a limited degree, you think. <laughs> This conversation has to continue. Yes, it does. You know, we've, we've planted our flags on various positions mm -hmm. here. We have to look back later and see how it all worked out. True, yeah. true. Yeah. Will you come back? I, I'll certainly do. I'll yeah. come back and join you. <coughs> all right. Sounds excellent. Thank you, Ethan. Take care, everybody. So science is not always <laughs> likable. <laughs>